Hi again, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to the second video in Module 4. This video will introduce you to how organizations use informal and social workplace learning. There are six items on the agenda. We will look at informal and social workplace learning from the organization's perspective, paying particular attention to how organizations actually use informal and social learning. There are two analysis questions to help you focus and think about how to apply information in this module. To get the most out of these questions, I suggest you watch the video and then try to answer these questions, particularly the second one. According to Y. Hack and Hall, there is a growing awareness of the frequency and importance of informal learning in the workplace. Lifelong learning is a growing trend in conjunction with dissatisfaction of the effectiveness of the formal education system and off-the-job training. The researchers found that workers often use the internet to access information and ideas. If you think back to the video where we examine Canadian demographics, you'll understand how several cohorts demand this type of interaction. This table provides you with a quick overview of some of the roles of stakeholders in informal learning in the workplace. As you can see, all have awareness of informal learning, but as you can see on the right side of the table, the participation by these stakeholders lessens. Now think back to when we examined formal learning. We found that credentialing was one of the main purposes of formal learning. Here we find that these agencies are aware of informal learning, but otherwise do not participate. However, some may participate in learning assessment and evolution of informal learning, but this is uncommon. If you're familiar with instructional design, this table may be familiar to you. On the left, we see analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. This is known as the ADDIE model. Some organizations follow this model in their approach to informal and social workplace learning. And if you think about workers, some also follow many of these steps as they discover and participate in informal and social workplace learning. Jane Hart says that with the easy availability of tools, people are now seeking out and finding learning material that is relevant to them. On the other hand, those who design and deliver formal training are meeting the needs of the organizations to address learning and performance needs. Individuals and teams are using tools at their disposal to fulfill their own professional learning and development goals and needs. There are a number of strategies used for informal and social workplace learning. Job aids are often used to support learners at the time they need it. This is just-in-time learning. EPSS, which is an acronym for Electronic Performance Support Systems, is an electronic repository where workers may find information, guidance, and tools to do their job. EPSS is not online help or e-learning, but instead a vast catalog of knowledge that is available to workers when they need it. Subject matter experts may be used to assist with solving problems at the moment when they are needed. Finally, portals are hubs for all of the resources just mentioned. These multiple strategies are often chosen by the learner to suit immediate needs of the job. While some are social, others are informal. Organizations should take note of all of the strategies and attempt to make information available to workers using these various strategies. There are three synthesis questions that you need to answer for this video. In general, we are exploring the choices of organizations and how and why they choose the type of learning that best suits its needs. Then, from an instructional design perspective, why do you think blogs or videos we watch are valuable to designers? As you learn more about informal and social learning, try to think about how these affect 
how you acquire knowledge in the workplace. Thanks for watching.